Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and today I wanted to do kind of an informative video for you. So a few people have asked me how I edit my photos, the cameras I use, and all of that good stuff. And I think I have written a blog post on it, but I wanted to just make a video today because it's a lot easier to just talk about all of this stuff. And then I can actually show you how I do some of it too. If you're curious, I have an Instagram account at Jessica Harumi. I have a blog by the same name and I do this YouTube thing too. So I create a lot of content, a lot of photos and videos. Um, today I want to mostly focus on the photos, but I am going to show you the equipment that I use for my videos as well. So let's get into it. So a little background on me first. I did study photography in college. That was my art major. But I definitely don't think that the skills that I use today to shoot stuff from my blog can't be learned on your own. Um, all of this information is super accessible and I know there's thousands upon thousands of YouTube videos out there that will go way more in depth than I ever could. Um, if you're looking for a kind of practical sort of how-to, then this might be the right video for you. So we'll get right into it and I'm going to start by showing you all of the equipment that I use day to day. So if you're shooting all of the photos for my blog and Instagram, I use two cameras. My my um, Canon 5D Mark IV, which is a beautiful camera. I absolutely love this. This has been my dream camera ever since I was like 12 years old, I think. And I just bought this last year actually. And I've just really enjoyed using it. So it's a bit of an investment. If you're just starting out, I don't think that this is necessary, this kind of quality, but as you continue and progress, you're going to want higher quality images. If you are looking for your own equipment and looking to upgrade your equipment, then I cannot recommend this enough. This is a really common camera that bloggers use a lot too. With that, I use this lens. This is a Canon 50mm um, 1.4 lens and it is an absolutely gorgeous lens. And before that, I was using a really similar lens. It was the Canon 50mm 1.8 and the quality is just night and day. This lens and this camera combined just makes like the most beautiful photos and um, it's just really easy to use. I also use the Canon PowerShot G7X and it's a really popular camera with vloggers because it has great video quality for its price range and for its size. It's really portable, small. The Canon 5D Mark IV I use for a lot of my sit down videos. I also um, use it for my blog photos and for work um, when I'm shooting products. The Canon PowerShot G7X I use for my more casual videos. I use it for a lot of like my IGTV videos and the uh, vertical cutaways that you see in like my capsule wardrobe videos, styling videos. I also use this camera for a lot of my everyday shots that I put on Instagram and I actually don't use my phone for any photos on my Instagram. And this was the first camera that I purchased to specifically use for content creation. Um, and then that leads me into the tripods that I use. Um, so I have this handheld one for vlogging, and then I have two other tripods that I use for my photos and videos. And the last piece of equipment that I use is this Rode microphone. This I got um, to use with my Canon 5D on my YouTube videos. So yeah, if you're looking for some like an inexpensive way to upgrade your sound quality, I suggest this. You can also record sound on your iPhone and then sync it up with the video. So now to move on to editing, I wanted to share the apps that I use. I pretty much do all my editing on my phone right now. Um, it's not ideal, especially for editing blog photos, but I don't currently have like Photoshop or Lightroom on my computer. So the apps that I use for editing photos, the main one is Snapseed. So here's a photo that we recently shot on the Canon 5D and I just transferred it to my phone. I usually just airdrop the photos after I go through them on my camera. And what I usually do in Snapseed is edit the basic stuff like the lighting. So I just go into tune image and I like to use the brightness. Um, I don't use contrast too often. Saturation sometimes is necessary. <laughs> Ambience, I really like this setting because it kind of just changes the overall tone of your photos. So you can go like really uh, kind of contrasty, monochromatic, or um, kind of even everything out more. And I usually use more on this side. And then edit highlights, shadows. And then if you just hold down on the picture, you can see the difference. 
Then I also like the selective tool so you can just click on the area and then if you kind of like zoom in or out with two fingers, you can select a really specific area of the photo, change the brightness, saturation, contrast, or structure of it. And then another good one to use is the white balance. I usually just go in with a little eyedropper and select the best area to balance out the overall like temperature of it. Um, then when I export it, you can save it as a copy of the photo or just modify the original. Those are the ones that I usually use the most, but there's just so many useful tools on Snapseed. Another app that I used a lot is a color story and these are some great filters. A lot of bloggers actually release filter packs through a color story. So that's a great way to just right off the bat easily create a cohesive feed using filters that are all like in the same kind of category or just choosing two or three that you like the most and then adjusting them for each photo because they will look different on each photo. And then there are two apps that I use for really, really light retouching. The first is Retouch. So the object removal on Retouch is really impressive. It's right here and you just kind of select what you don't want in the photo. I don't ever use this on my own body. Um, I always use it for like cleaning up things in the other parts of the photos. Another app that I use very sparingly is Facetune and I do not use this on myself. The one thing that I use this on actually is to take wrinkles out of my pants because I never iron anything and my pants are just always, always wrinkled. And you don't want to take out all the wrinkles obviously, just anything that is like distracting to the photo. And I really suggest never using this on your face, not necessary. And the app that I use the most now is actually Lightroom. So I'm kind of reteaching myself Lightroom using the app right now and then I will eventually put it onto my computer which I still need to do. And the reason that I've started using Lightroom more is because I edit my photos on my phone and then I would transfer them to my back to my computer and use them for my blog and I realized that uh, the color stories filters that I was using depletes the quality. So because I was using my photos on my blog and on Instagram, I realized that I really needed to edit them in Lightroom but another thing that I really want to work on this year is to just teach myself more about Lightroom create my own presets and it gives the overall vibe that I want for my photos honestly I have nothing against buying filter packs you can buy Lightroom mobile filter packs you can buy a pack for your desktop as well and Lightroom is really something you just have to play around in because there is a lot that you can do in it so here's one of the photos that I used earlier and I can go in and adjust the exposure the lighting things like that i do still do that on snapseed just because right now it's a lot faster for me to do it that way but i am planning to just do it all in lightroom eventually so you can go and adjust the basic lighting and then you can adjust the temperature vibrant saturation under color and you can also go into mix and choose specific colors to change the saturation and vibrance of. There's also a lot of effects like texture and dehazing, clarity, things like that. There is also the Canon Camera Connect app um, and I use this for two different things. First is to transfer photos directly from my camera to my phone, um, which is really useful when I don't have my computer with me. And then the other thing I use it for is the remote live view shooting mode. So that basically turns my phone into a remote clicker so that I can shoot on a tripod and see the photo in advance on my phone and then take photos. Um, so now I wanna talk a bit about actually shooting photographs and there are four ways that I do this. The first is using my tripod and a combination of like self timer or remote clicker to take pictures of myself. I do a lot of the photos in my room, like just against this plain white wall. I do those photos this way. The second way I take photos is um, by connecting my camera to my computer and I use remote live view shooting. Then I just open up a ca the Canon EOS utility program on my computer and it basically works the same way as the phone where I can have a live view of the photograph from my computer screen and then click the shutter button on my computer. The third and probably the most obvious way is to just have a friend or someone you know shoot your photos for you. And I have a few tips for getting the best photo that you can when you're not behind the camera. The first is to direct your friend or whoever is taking the photo to angle the camera slightly lower, I would say slightly lower than your waist, and then point it upwards. 
This will like elongate your legs and give you the most flattering angle. And my second tip is to um, tell your friend to stand in the place that you're planning to stand. Then you can frame up the photo yourself, take a picture of them and tell them this is how I want my photo to look um, so that they can recreate that frame themselves. This is really ideal if you're shooting outside and you want to include certain things in the background. And my third tip for having someone else take your photo, just move around, feel comfortable to change your poses a lot. And that's the best way to achieve more candid photographs that just look more natural. And the fourth type of photo that I take, which is maybe my favorite type of photo to take because it's one that allows me to be most involved, is um, flat lays or styled photos. A flat lay is where you style a photograph, lots of different things on a surface, and then shoot from the top looking down. And you can get really creative with different types of props, lighting, they almost act like a mood board. You can really limit like the color palettes that you use, the textures, things like that to create an overall mood for your photo. So I think it's a really fun thing to just experiment with. If you've never tried it before, you might really like it. So that is all the information that I have for you today. I really hope you found this video useful. If you're interested in checking out any of the equipment or the apps that I mentioned, everything will be linked for you in the description box below. Yeah, and let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. I will also leave my blog post linked below that goes into a lot of detail of a lot of the stuff that I mentioned today. Um, please give this a video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.